If you're so fat that you're talking about exceeding the weight limit on an elevator and you don't think I need to lose some weight, this elevator is literally telling me I weigh too much. I should lose weight. Instead, you go, it's just the way it is. This country is just fat phobic. I don't understand how you can look at any anything in life through the realm of reality. You are literally living in fairy tale land. Thinness is the American dream. There are numerous studies, recent and not so recent, showing the same thing, that people cannot keep weight off for more than a couple of years. And instead of thinking, hey, maybe these things don't actually work and we should look at other ways to improve people's health, maybe we should just treat people a little bit better and make... I really have never heard the statement, thinness is the American dream. Usually when people think of an American dream, it's like prosperity, wealth, maybe owning property, having a business, having a, a middle-class household, usually those things. You never hear thinness. You actually, I would actually think it's <laughs> probably a little bit different than that. I would think that it's like a, a fat guy on like a lawn chair, leaned back with his gut out with a Bud, with a Bud Light chilling while his wife comes in with like apple pie or something that's what i'm thinking when i think of like the american dream okay like, i've never heard somebody say it's thinness I, that just kind of goes to show you what do you think can you let me know please what do you think when you think of the american dream because i've never heard anybody ever say it's thinness i i could not think of a more ridiculous statement to be said and then also <laughs> The fact that this person is so incredibly sought in their ways that they have to justify things like weight gain, okay? So saying something like, you can't keep weight off for more than a limited amount of time. What is the limited amount of time? Because the, the number that I always hear from these people is five to 10 years. So if you can't keep the weight off for five to 10 years, you just shouldn't try at all, which is crazy of a statement, by the way. If you keep weight off for five to 10 years, that's better than not keeping weight off at all. That's better than keeping the weight on your body for your entire lifespan and doing literally nothing about it. If you manage to lose weight and you manage to keep that weight off of you for five plus years, good job. You did a great thing for yourself. I will give you two thumbs up. If I had three thumbs up, I would give you that as well, but I can't because I don't have a, an extra hand, but I do have an extra leg. I would do that for you, but it's not possible for me. If you do manage to do that, good job. That's just what it is. And the fact that you're sitting here going, we should. And so because of that's not possible, because people can't keep the weight off for more than five to 10 years, we shouldn't even advocate for people to gain for lose weight. Instead, we should be advocating for people to pursue other health practices that will help them more in the long term. So not weight. So not weight loss. That's not a long term solution, right? So like, what else do you recommend? Like walking more? Oh, can't walk because I'm so fat that every time I take a step, my kneecaps literally buckle under the sheer girth of my body. The bigness of my body within question is now buckling my kneecaps. Can't walk, can't run, can't get out of bed, can't do anything because the fat of my body is prohibiting me in such a way that the idea of losing it would benefit me. But instead, I got to listen to some fat lady on the internet tell me that it's actually not the problem. I should be pursuing other <laughs> other health promoting practices such as ways to improve people's health. Maybe we should just treat people a little bit better and make it's it's treat people better is so so the problem with this, right, is that you have you're putting all of your you're putting all your hopes and dreams on someone else rather than having it be for you. You know, it, it's easier to do it yourself than it is to put something on somebody else and hope they do it. And especially on people that don't even know you exist. Like for instance, the society, like you, if you're sitting here going, we should just treat fat people better. You do realize what you're doing is like, you're, you're putting your whole stack of chips on a phantom element and hoping that people are just going to be nice to you, which is never going to happen <laughs> because that's not how it works. People are individuals and they're going to do what they want to do. So if your claim is that we should be, making it it should be better people should be nicer to other people sure i agree people should be nicer but that ain't, that doesn't mean it's gonna happen wouldn't it be better to actually do something for yourself rather than rely on someone else or uh not even someone but entire sections of someone's is to improve people's health maybe we should just treat people a little bit better and make their lives less miserable and make things more accessible to how do them. we do that that though? makes people just go well it's their fault it is. it is their fault. And again, it's like, why would you why would you take all of the responsibility from yourself and cede that to someone else and multiple someone else's that don't even know you? It just seems it seems completely crazy to do that. If it's not being enforced by the government or like taxes, for instance, is that what you want? Do you want like the government to come into like people's doors and knock on the door and be like, hey, were you 
were you nice to a fat person today? Just check it. Just check him because guess what? Fat people are living a very tough life and it's really, oh, you're, oh, you're, you're in debt. Oh, you have, you, you have child expenses. Oh, you just got fired. But, you know, make sure you're nice to fat people, though, because fat people are dealing with, they're dealing with a lot of stuff. You, I don't know about what the fuck you're talking about. First of all, you're thin. Get the fuck out of my face. The fact that you said that you got fired from a job, fat people can't even get jobs, okay? They can't even sit on toilets without falling off because their bodies are so incredibly improperly designed that they might just slip off the side of the toilet. And you're talking about having kids? Healthcare? What are you talking about right now, thinny? Thinny, how dare you conflate yourself with a fat person, you disgusting orange person. Anyway. It's 90 to 99 percent them. That makes people just go, well, it's their fault. It is 90 to 99 percent of people's fault. True. And so those people are all bad and you just need to. And nobody's saying that they're bad, but at least if you know that it's 90 to 99 percent your fault, at least you know that 99, 90 to 99 percent that you could change yourself, right? And if you want to go on the lines of like, oh, but, you know, fat people, they can't change because genetics, like most of per most of somebody's body, they can't even change. Sure, if you're talking about the fucking bone structure of somebody, sure, you can't change the bone structure and the genetic makeup of somebody's entire being, sure. But I, I, I hate when they, do when they make that claim because it's like nobody is talking about it like that. When have you ever heard somebody say, I'm going to go to the gym so I can build myself up and somebody goes, but you can't build your bones. You can't like, you know, build, you can't elongate the bone. I know. What are you talking about? I'm going to the gym to build muscle. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, okay. Anyway, she didn't make that claim, but I wouldn't be surprised if she did. To be one of the good ones and of people's fault. And so those people are all bad and you just need to be one of the good ones. It's like, do you actually think those people are all just bad people. No. They're just immoral. They're just not self-controlled. It's just most of them are lazy or they just don't want to do anything about it because it's easier to just sit down and eat your Doritos and watch your Real Housewives of California or whatever. I don't know. Love is Blind. It's easier to watch Love is Blind sitting down on the couch than it is to go into the gym and then like actually picking out good nutritious foods that are going to benefit you instead of buying the ones that taste taste really really good which are designed to taste really really good by the way that are supposed to hook you on a feeling so that way when you put it in your mouth you just oh my god that shit tastes so <gasps> that shit tastes so good well for some reason my heart hurts right now after i just body slammed that entire bag that must mean it my heart loves that shit oh man i gotta body slam another bag that's what it's like. I'm not saying that fat people are bad people. I don't think fat people are bad people. I think personally, a lot of fat people probably just don't care. And that's all right. You you deserve to not care in the sense of like you live in a free country. You, this, this beautiful um, society that we have completely enables you to do that. And that's fine if you want to do that. But it just becomes an issue when you complain about that stuff. Like if you're fat as fuck and you're big bellied and you're sitting here going, I just... I hate that I can't walk upstairs and I can't do this. Society needs to do something for me. What are you saying? Why do you think society needs to do something for you when you put yourself in the scenario and then also you are the only one that can like drag yourself out of that same scenario? You can do it. Not the government, not society, not your mom, not your dad, not your kids. You, you're an adult. You can make your own decisions. Because if over 90% of people cannot do something, maybe... It's just not something that humans are that capable of. This statistic that they use, by the way, this 90 to 95 percent of people that can, this 90, 90 to 95 percent of people that pursue weight loss eventually fail or can never do it or regain the weight. Or if they do regain the weight, it's more weight after like five to ten years was a bullshit study they did. It wasn't even a real study. They didn't they didn't consider like all the people or some shit like I remember looking up this study so long ago and it like. It's like every time they have to keep going to this one thing, this one study that like, oh, guess what? People can't pursue weight loss. Are you, why would you, why? Why would you ever, even if that was the case, don't you want to be a part of that 5%, that 10%? And again, even five to 10 years of that weight not being on your body, that's pretty good. That's really good matter of fact. So even in these particular scenarios, and then if your argument is like, oh yeah, if 90 to 95 percent of people can't do it, then maybe we just shouldn't do it. Are you fucking dumb? Then like, what's the alternative? Just like fucking die? Just live in this perpetually unhealthy body for like the extended period of your life, which to be honest here, it's not going to be extended for very long because your body is literally every single day being taxed beyond belief over and over and over again in every sector of every sector of your being. 
and you just want to live like that. That's the solution. Do nothing and be happy with that. That's terrible. That is absolutely outrageous advice. I can't believe you would even advocate for that. Maybe it's just not something that humans are that capable of. And this is the same advice you get when you tell your boomer dad that you can't pay your damn rent because it's 80% of your income. First of all, dude, where is that even coming from, dude? Where is this rent argument coming from when, it ta when we're talking about weight loss? There's a very... If you can't pay your rent, I definitely feel for you, dude. I feel for you, man. Rent is like ridiculously high nowadays, dude. Depending on where you live, of course, right? I live in a big city. Rent is ridiculous here. And maybe one day I'm going to move out of this fucking city. Because like I went to other places. And it is astronomically different compared to where I live. I remember I went to Michigan. I went to Michigan, right? And these housing prices over there. I was looking at a better apartment than what I lived in. And it was $900 a month. And then I was looking at that and I was like, how the fuck is this apartment cheaper than the one I live in currently? And it's better in like every single way. It had washer and dryer. It had a fucking garbage disposal and all this like great stuff that you would think that like I would be getting, you know, I mean, granted, I do have that stuff now, but the point I'm making is I'm paying all this extra money and I'm not getting shit for it. I don't know. That's besides the point, but you're conflating two different things. Rent is a hell of a lot different than getting in shape one doesn't require you to do very much in the sense of like going out of your way to like pursue more you you realistically all you have to do is just eat less that's really what it comes down to look at what you're eating and then to be honest that's all it is just take what you're eating and reduce your calories as much as you can uh, not as much as you can but to to a degree where you hit that line where you start losing weight and as soon as you plateau lower it a little bit more plateau lower it a little bit more when we talk about rent then you got to like pick up another job, I guess, ask for, I don't know, a raise or something like that, which raises don't even really make sense anymore. I remember I was working at this establishment and I asked this guy, I was like, listen, dude, I, I come in all the time. You know, I come in all the time. I pick up extra shifts. I'm doing all this extra work. What's the word on a raise? And this dude was like, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. Right. And like a week later, I had to ask him again. I was like, bro, what's going on? Like, am I getting this fucking raise? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Let me, let me talk to you. And he brought me into the office. And this was just some bullshit, like, retail job, whatever. And he was like, yeah, so I talked to the higher-ups, and we we approved you for a raise. And I was like, oh, awesome, how much? And he was like, um, we could do 20 cents. And I was like, bro, 20 cents? 20 cents, bro? Do I look like a woman? First of all, look at me. I'm a man, all right? First of all, dude, you know you got to pay me a premium for working at this establishment. You can pay the women that. I'm fucking with you, obviously. It's a joke. It's a joke. But... 20 cents is, bro, what the fuck is that? And ever since I got that notice of like 20 cents, I never, bro, I called out more than I ever had before because they they most definitely did not value the time that I was putting. I was putting in so much fucking work, dude. It was insane. I was literally working some days, like 12 hours, I'm not even joking. Like I would go in for my six to eight and then somebody would call out and I'd be like, I'll pick it up. I don't care. Like I'll do it. I wasn't eating. I was literally just sitting there drinking iced teas for 12 hours a day. I had one break. It was crazy. I don't know what the fuck was good with me, but uh, it wasn't even good money either, but it was good money when I had the job, which was like, I don't know when I was like 20, I had no money. So like any type of money was like good for me. And I just wasted it on video games and I don't know, like iced coffees. He says, just go get a better job. Just do what we did and put a little bit of money away for savings. Just stop eating avocado toast. It Man, I, I love that. I love that like avocado toast sediment, dude. Most of the time when I hear people complain about the money problems that they have, it is really up to them to solve their own issues. You can't blame like your millenn your your boomer parents. Like granted, they may have had it easier. They came from a different time period. They can't really relate to the same way that you can relate nowadays growing up in this particular environment, this and that. Things are different nowadays in comparison to where they were back in the day, right? But if your argument is like, uh, get a better job of this and that. A lot of people that I know that are very, very poor are poor because they are very financially bad with their money. You know how many poor people I know that are living below poverty lines that have the new, the newest iPhone? All of them. Not even joking with you. I'm not joking with you. You look at my phone. This is a Google Pixel I don't even fucking know. I've had this phone for like five, six years. And I, I, I'm not even, I don't know. Like it, it works. It does what I need it to do. It, I have no problem with it. And I have no, it's, I've had this phone for so long. There's no cracks. There's nothing. And I take good care of all my products. Right. But I see so many people with iPhones cracks, bro. These people are going on vacations. They're constantly in debt. They have no money. They're going to buy four or five, six iced coffees a single day at Starbucks. And each one of those is like $9. And I see people like, 
Uber eating, dude. And these people constantly complain to me like, David, I have no money. What am I going to do this and this and this? And I always go, what are you wasting your money on so often that you just like, you're smoking weed, you're doing all this other stuff. And people that are poor, granted, it, it is very, very hard to be poor in the sense of like, if something comes up, let's say for instance, you're driving your car and your, your fucking car breaks down. It's gonna be super expensive for you to get that into the shop, get the money allocated together, put that money towards the car that you're gonna have to fix because it's your only means of transportation to get to the job that you need to go to and things such and so forth. So whereas if somebody was richer or something like that, if the car broke down, okay, I'll just rent a car for a week, no problem, or I can just buy a whole new car, not a big deal, right? So I understand, it's very hard to be poor, but a lot of poor people are poor from their own decisions, dude. You just need to make better financial decisions, stop wasting all your money on Uber Eats, stop Stop wasting your money on ordering out. Stop wasting your money on weed, alcohol, all this other stuff. Buying the new iPhone. Why do you need the new iPhone? I don't know. And then constantly going into debt. If you have a credit card, that credit card is not your money. That is money that you're going to have to owe. Stop having these recurring payments of paying the minimum monthly balance. Pay the entire due. Stop acting like this $3,000, $4,000, $10,000 that the credit card gives you is your money. It's not. It's not your money. Your money is in your wallet that you're going to have to spend every single month. Allocate your money differently. Stop complaining about that shit. I don't know. That's a side point. Anyway. It needs to be easy and it needs to be achievable because if it's not. That's not true. If something, nothing, it doesn't have to be easy or achievable. Okay. First of all, dude, it does need to be achievable. But if you're talking about it in the realm of weight loss, it's actually achievable. It, it is 100% achievable. And depending on what you mean by easy, it is actually easy as well because what you have to do in order to lose weight is just a calorie deficit right like working out going having an actual schedule of working out walking more depending on how fat you are right and it's really about calories in calories out so if you're eating 4,000 calories a day go down to four go down to 3,500 and you'll start to lose weight guarantee it 100% because if your body's used to eating 4,000 calories a day that's what it's using in order to survive so, but if you lower that you're gonna start losing weight because your body's used to 4,000 calories it's simple math so anyway no, things don't have to be easy or obtainable. It just has to be possible. And also in these particular scenarios, it doesn't even apply because it is actually easy and it is also, it is also attainable. Then what would you do? Both thinness and the American dream of financial stability. Are okay, that is 100%. So it, again, I didn't watch, I, I've not watched this video, but this that's what I imagine the, the American dream to be. Financial stability, money. That's what I, most people I feel then like would consider Then what would you do? Both thinness and the American dream of financial stability or prosperity or being Jeff Bezos or whatever are things that most people. I think that most people are not looking at Jeff Bezos as like, this is what I want to do in America. Most people in America just want to have a stable income, take care of their, their family, their kids and live a quality life. They're willing to work. They're willing to do what they got to do to support the government and things like that. I don't think most people are thinking they want to be Jeff Bezos. I think it's a weird most people are not doing your that. prosperity or being Jeff Bezos or whatever are things that most people cannot actually achieve long term. Yeah, no fucking shit, dude. But why would you ever go to Jeff Bezos, dude? Jeff Bezos is like a hyper, 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 like weird scenario person. You know, and it, it, most of the people that are super, super rich and super, super billionaire people will even tell you this. They got there because of circumstance. They got there because of luck, right? Because it takes a very particular individual to be at these high end, big fucking, you know, a lot of people will contribute this to like, oh, they're just, you know, um, t fucking the system or like they're just like uh, fucking everybody around them. A lot of these people got to the situations they did because of things they had no control over. So maybe they grew up with like a very stable family. Maybe they grew up in the right area of the country. Maybe they grew up with the right family members. Maybe they grew up with, you know what I'm talking about? A lot of this stuff is very, very minute. A lot of people might not consider these things to be like super like, oh, David, I have those things too. I have those things too. I'm sure you do, but you have to also understand the circumstances that these people were in. They're different from a lot of other people. So in the sense of like, how does somebody make it on social media, right? How does somebody make it in like other other places, right? You would need a lot of people in your life growing up early. Like I remember I was listening to this guy one time and he said, how is it that you had this like 1 billion subscriber YouTube channel? And he said, I did it myself. I did it all myself. Like I, you know, it was just all me. I was the one that made the videos. I was the one that did that. And then this other guy said, but what about like your parents? Like, didn't your parents supply the internet? Didn't your parents supply you the computer? Didn't your parents like instill into you these values of work very hard and make sure you're capable enough? Didn't you have your dad and your mom working 24 seven to like visualize that you are also supposed to be working all this time and making sure that you have these. And 
it occurred to me at that particular moment in time, a lot of the shit that makes somebody incredibly valuable or puts people in the in the right place for the right time, because a lot of people are walking around doing jobs that they shouldn't do. They shouldn't they shouldn't have to do when they could be like engineers or they could be working on like the space shuttle. They could be working on things, but they can't because they didn't they weren't put in the right place in order for them to be prosperous enough to be able to achieve those things. Right. So if, if you're somebody that grew up in the hood and you have to like sell drugs because there's no other prospects for you, jobs are not hiring, things such and so forth. This is all you have, but you're a very smart individual and maybe you did have this like drive for doing it, but this the opportunities are just not there. And it, it sucks because a lot of somebody's entire personality, entire like everything is determined on things that they have absolutely no control over. And that sucks a lot of dick. Anyway. And are made to believe that is their fault. When if you look, at that being the case for the majority of people, you almost start to think, maybe there must be some other factors at play. You're comparing something that is like the extreme. If you're talking about Jeff Bezos and then you're comparing losing weight to Jeff Bezos, that is one of the most retarded takes I've ever heard in my fucking life. Losing weight is not so so incredibly unobtainable, like becoming a quad billionaire and like fucking running out anal beads out of your new wife's fucking i don't know dude his new wife has like a non-movable face she has so much plastic surgery which is fine i don't care right that's what he wants to but i heard he's into anal beads i heard through the grapevine that jeff bezos is doing a whole bunch of toys now his last wife didn't want to do that so now he's like experimenting with a whole bunch of anal beads and dildos and things such and so forth i think it's great i think if you're jeff bezos and you want to experiment with dildos and things like that. I'm a total fan, by the way, of more toys in the bedroom. Not on me personally. I'm not trying to do any of that shit. Um, you're not putting anything in me. My butthole is completely off fucking limits, right? Anytime a girl gets too close, dude, I always like, nah, bro. This is not, don't, don't even think about it. Like, don't, that entire area should never be even thought of as even like a possibility of entrance or anything like that. But if you are a person and you are a woman or a man, if you're gay and you want those things to be infiltrating your butt cheeks or your egg sac, that's fine too. As long as you're not desensitizing yourself. Like I knew a girl and she would literally tell me that she could not beat off without having a vibrator. And she was telling me that if we were to ever have sex that she would need to tell, I would need to tell her because she literally would take hours to bust anytime that she would beat off. She would just sit there and she told me she would watch Housewives um, with the vibrator. Like, she would just, like, have it like this. Like, if this was a vibrator, right? She would just push it. Like, like she would just have it strangled on her clitoris for hours. And eventually, she would be watching. Ha, ha, ha. Oh. That would be her. Every time. Two, three hours. And she said that, um, that, that that's what we have to do. And I was just thinking, like, this that's ridiculous. Like, that is so crazy that you put yourself through this. And she said she'd been beating off like that since she was, like, 14 years old. This woman was, like, 24 and I was just thinking, like, there are some guys I know that will beat off and they just they'll do it in 20 seconds. Right. They'll just fucking dust done, whatever, dude. Right. And because of that, when they're with a woman, dude, they don't actually even feel vagina sometimes because they've been strangling their meats for so long with the hard sensation. Because a lot of guys don't even beat off with lotion. Right. It seems inefficient a lot of times for guys to beat off with lotion. Um, some guys will beat their shit and they'll have the roughest, manliest hands ever. Right. And when they beat that shit, they'll strangle it. And every time they beat their meat, it becomes progressively harder and harder. You're building up calluses on your meat, right? You got like, I don't even know what you want to call it, dude. Beat off blisters all over your meat wagon. And every time you beat off, it becomes harder and harder to achieve that same satisfaction of beating off. Kind of like Snoop Dogg when he smokes weed, right? Now he has to smoke some serious shit to even achieve the same high that he did 20 years ago. And when you're with a woman... And a woman goes, let me suck you off. And she's sucking you off for 20 minutes. And you're just sitting there like, I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why you've been, this is the best blow job. I, I can't feel anything. I'm like, you know what I'm talking about? It's like, I'm like Charles Xavier below the waist because I can't feel the mouth wetness upon my penis. And that's tough. There's a lot of toughness. So oftentimes I tell dudes, stop beating off as much. It's okay to beat off, but just don't beat off so much that your penis becomes inverted and stop beating off women too if you're using vibr vibrators every single time and if you actually ever do have sex with another person it's not going to be the same because how the fuck is that person going to like what do you what am i supposed to do put the vibrator on my tongue you know what uh, whatever dude i don't know i don't but even know no, what talking about no you can't about. go there because maybe there must be some other factors at play but no you can't go there because if things were out of people's control then we would have to what help them and 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 they don't deserve that Please. Let it's such a bad. Everything she just said was so incredibly dumb. All of it. All of it was stupid. Let me tell you. 
Uh, but the comment that I can get, which makes my blood boil the most. This overline is serious, bro. I don't know what's up with this girl overlining her shit so much, dude. Because I got one this morning and I need to vent. So this comment will be on one of my videos of like plus size fashion or body positivity or just confidence. And it'll be something like, I am fat and I know this is unhealthy. Or I am fat and I know I need to change my ways and then go on to no. criticize the content of the video. And there might be something stupid like, I don't know, just dressing for my body or maybe dressing. Yeah, but what's wrong with that? Most, like a lot of people, like a lot of dudes that do drugs, right? I know a bunch of dudes that smoke a lot of weed. And when you talk to them and go like, bro, you know this is an issue, right? Like you're smoking a lot of weed every single day and they'll go, I know. I know it's a real big issue. I know it's a problem. I want to fix my problem, but I'm just, I'm addicted or I just can't stop or whatever the fuck. They'll acknowledge it in the same way that if somebody's like really overweight, do you think like people that are overweight are just ignorant about their circumstances? Do you think that like most people that, that are having problems don't know that they're having problems? What is this line of dialogue that you have right now in your head? Like, are you, are you working under the assumption that if you're fat, you should never talk about the problems with being fat? Is that what we're working under right now? Because there are some general, gen, generally here, terrible issues with being fat. And if you're sitting here thinking that people shouldn't be talking about those things, that's crazy. In a way that's deemed unflattering, you know, something like that. And they feel the need to tell me that. And the reason why they- But I, I just think it's, I'm sorry if I keep interrupting, but I just think it's so interesting how these people will post videos about themselves in these particular types of ways. Like this woman posts a lot of fit checks or something like that. I don't know. She models a lot of clothes sometimes. I don't fucking know, dude. I'm not, I'm not interested in personally watching big women model clothes. It's not something I really want to like watch. But anyway, I see them every once in a while. And if you're upset that somebody is making these claims on a video of you trying to promote your fashion or your body or your, you know, fatness in some particular type of way. Do you see how fucking dumb that shit is given the fact that you're able to post what you want to post, but you don't like it when other post people post things about what you do? Like, don't, isn't it, isn't it a little bit weird that you think it's okay for you to do that, but you don't like it when other people do that? Or like, you, you think they shouldn't do that? Why? I just think it's sometimes these people should actually think about or have a critical look at what they're actually saying and a lot of things that these people are saying that they're talking about are not even like far-fetched ideas like somebody commenting like hey that's unhealthy you're unhealthy oh uh, yeah oh uh, yeah this makes my blood boil the most team is that first part the i am fat and then yeah they, they don't like it when if you if you if you are part of their organization or you're a part of their group and then you still shit on it that somehow means that you're, I don't know, like you're lesser than them or they like, they dislike it because somehow like your words have more value, generally speaking, because if you're fat, that means that you're going through all the problems of being fat and you're enlightened enough to understand that these are problems associated with being fat. So that really, really, um, puts a thorn in their sides because they know that who else are we to believe than the fat person themselves that are going through the problem. So that's the reason why they genuinely, genuinely dislike it because they know that it, your your opinion does have a lot of validity. To explain and background because it's an attempt to validate what they're about to say. It's an attempt to validate what they're about to say yeah. as gospel, as truth. True. And it's insidious, and it's kind of ironic. <laughs> so who else are we to believe than the person that is actually going through the problem? If so you, you, they, this person obviously has a problem when thin people talk about the traumas of being fat, right? They especially have problems with thin people that were formerly fat that had those problems and then now they are thin so they could talk about the both, best of both worlds, Hannah Montana style. But now you have an issue with the actual fat people. And this is the problem I see oftentimes where they say like, we want more fat advocates. We want more fat representation. You don't really want more fat representation. You just want more fat people that agree with you that are representing you. You don't want actual fat people because the majority of fat people here in America, westernized civilizations are not dumb people that are not going around telling people how great it is to be fat and they're not suffering from the bad, terrible consequences of being fat. Most of them understand that there are bad things that are attributed to being fat and it's okay with them or they're just lazy or they just it's not something they really care to change at that particular moment in time. So if you're upset that somebody is fat and they're enlightened enough to tell you and themselves that they have problems, that's dumb. That's fucking dumb. If anything, you should be happy for them because they're acknowledging not only are they fat, which is something you advocate for, but they're acknowledging the badness of being fat. Everything is okay until it's not okay. You understand? Like you could be fat, but once you become too fat, then it's a problem.
<laughs> when we see someone outside of a group oh, of that laugh kind was crazy. of ironic. <laughs> when we see someone outside of a group of people uh, attack a group of people, we it can come across as bullying. For example, if a man criticizes a woman, it can come across as misogynistic, right? But if someone within the group mm. criticizes the group, it has a lot more social power and weight. Pun intended. I agree, actually. This is like, bro, one of the reasons why Just Pearly Things, you guys know who Just Pearly Things? One of the reasons why she became so popular was even though she was claiming the same bullshit as a lot of the people on the red pill, and they were saying the same echo chamber shit over and over again, everybody, you know, you can say the same shit over and over again, but it's the novelty of having a woman say it, right? Because like, if you're sitting here shitting on women all day, as a man, I right, dude, you're a man shitting on women, like it is what it is. You can't relate, you don't understand what the, what are the ideas of being women, things like that, you can't, you don't have these types of things. But if you're a woman yourself, and you're shitting on women, then suddenly, it has more validity. You know what I'm talking about? Kind of like when a black guy tells you it's all right to say the N-word. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe you could say it now because this black guy is telling you to say it, right? But that doesn't... I, I mean, it's true to a certain degree. This is one of the reasons why I don't think that... Uh, I, this is one of the reasons why I don't think that people should hyper-focus on group mentality. Or, like, they should put themselves in a shoe of, like, oh, if a black person says it's okay, then I think it's okay. Why the fuck would this black guy have a monopoly on what language you can speak in the same way that why would a, a a fat person have a monopoly on the words that you can speak about being fat? It doesn't make sense. I don't give a fuck, right? Say whatever you want to say. It's either all okay or none of it's okay. But if someone within the group criticizes the group... It has a lot more social power and weight, pun intended, behind it. So, for example, if a man criticizes a woman in the workplace as being catty, that can come across as misogynistic. But if a woman, and I have met these women, goes in the workplace, I don't like working with other women. I think they can be catty and bitchy. Pick me girls, dude. How many, man, do you know how many women and even dudes too sometimes, but I see it really prominently with girls on TikTok that go, I'm not like the other girls, you know, you, I'm just one of the guys, I'm just one of the dudes, like, I play video games, and I don't wear deodorant, and I'm just, I always look at that, and I go, why are you shitting on women like that, dude, why are you, why are you always doing that, there's nothing wrong with wearing makeup, you know that, there's nothing wrong with wearing deodorant, but she's right, she's right, the, the, the people behind the organizations, if you have somebody that's, like, on the other side, like, a, for instance, if you're a Trump supporter, and you got a black guy on your side, dude, hold up, this black guy likes Trump? then it's got a lot more validity behind it, right? You've seen it, I've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It has a lot more social power behind that statement because it's like, people think, well, why would she criticize her own gender? She's True. part of that community. There must be some truth to it. Yeah, but it's like very different to say that because for 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 somebody to be a woman criticizing women, right? There, there might be some claims there, but for a fat person to be criticizing another fat person, I think those are two two things that are very, very not similar at all. And then also the disadvantages that most of these fat people are talking about are not something like, oh, I think women are annoying to be around. And I think the perfumes that they wear are incredibly, they smell bad. I don't like coconut and things like that, right? I think vaginas are gross or things like that while you have a vagina. Most of the time, what fat people are complaining about are, man, I got diabetes, dude. My ankles always hurt. I have high blood pressure. My life perpetually sucks a lot of camel dick. It's stuff like that. So I don't think that it's like the same type of thing. I mean, sure, you can like, you can kind of intersect them a little bit, but it's it's not really the same. Where in actuality, it's just that she's an asshole. True. You know? True. Just she, it's just because she's an asshole. True. It's the... Women are assholes, man. <laughs> Yeah, she said it, not me. Women are assholes. Same happening with these I am fat butt comments I get. They're trying to t show anyone who is reading I am fat and therefore I have some fucking value in about what I'm about to say. Where in actuality, they don't. And I guess as well on that, whatever they do. If they don't have value in what they're saying, then you don't have value in what you're saying either because you guys are both fat. Therefore, if you're using the reason why, like de to devalue her opinion is the basis of she is fat. Therefore, she doesn't have an opinion. You are also fat. So that doesn't make sense. And I always work under this assumption of like, sometimes people will enter statements and they'll say things through the guise of I'm an expert. I know because I went to school for this or I did that and I did this. And sometimes what I really hate so much is that when people say this stuff, they'll say the most incorrect, the most fucking bullshit statement you've ever heard in your life. But I'm an expert, but I have all this experience, but I have this and this. Like oftentimes um, it doesn't really matter, right? 
I, I think that if you're talking on a subject through the realm of authority, authority in the sense of like, I did this, I know what I'm talking about. It could make sense depending on what you're talking about. Like, for instance, Andrew Tate, a lot of people don't like him, right? I don't like him for a lot of reasons as well. He has some really, really good dating advice sometimes. Like sometimes you could tell he knows what he's talking about when he comes to dating women, right? But on the other hand, um, a lot of the information that he also gives is incredibly fucking terrible when it comes to dating women, right? So he'll say some good things like you should have money. You should be able to take care of your woman. You should be able to take her on trips. You should, you know, like basic shit that anybody could probably agree with. And then he'll preference that with, but you know, women belong in the fucking kitchen. They shouldn't work. I don't think they should ever be able to do anything. You know, I'm man, whatever the fuck. Like it's, there's truth to it, but then people conflate a lot of the stuff. So Sometimes it could work, but oftentimes I don't like it when people talk about things in a place of authority. Like, it just comes off really, really disingenuous to me. And it's almost like you're devaluing what the other person's opinion is. And just because you don't have, I would say, just because you don't have experience in a particular bracket doesn't mean you don't know what you're talking about. Deuce is actually what the majority of people think, because we live in a fat phobic society. The majority of people Too believe easy to say. that fatness is unhealthy. That's it is unhealthy. That's a factual statement. It depends on how fat that you are, though. If you're in the realm of five or 10 pounds over, 20 pounds over, I'm sure you're fine. But if you're 20, like, but here's the thing when people say, I'm five or 10 or 20 pounds over. These are not the people that people think about when you say you're unhealthy. Most people, when they say fat people are unhealthy, they're thinking about somebody that's 50, 60, 80, 100 pounds, 200 pounds over. They're not thinking about that guy that's slightly overweight and the, the girl that's a little bit thicker. Like nobody's thinking about that. So it's very interesting when I hear these people say fatness is not necessarily unhealthy. It's not, but nobody is looking at it in the realm that you're looking at it when you're talking about that stuff. But like most people, generally speaking, are unhealthy when they're fat and or fatness obese. Fatness means that you deserve uh, you deserve the ridicule and the bullying that you get from being in the fat phobic society. It's not that it's not about you deserve, it's about you <sighs> If you did it to yourself, that's like like if you're driving a car and you just fucking, you know what I'm saying? You just like ram the, you just drive it up on the sidewalk and just do, 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 just running over people, right? And then you get pulled over and the cops like, well, you killed like ten people, bro. Um, it's not good. We're gonna have to arrest you. And you're like, but why? But why would I suffer the consequences of my actions? Why would I do that in the same way that if you're fat and you're posting yourself on the internet and you're making yourself open to hundreds, if not thousands of people, millions, if not you know millions of people that are going to see that and you think that there are going to be a percentage of those people that are going to say those things, but you don't think that's fair. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Obviously, people are going to disagree with what you're saying. They're going to disagree with anything that you say. You can say something as basic as I think people should be able to drink water whenever they feel like it. And you'll have somebody go, mm, I don't know about that shit, bro. I don't think that water is like a universal right. I don't think people should just be able to drink it whenever they want. The point I'm making is even on something as, as, as simple as that, you'll have people that disagree with you in the same way that you promoting fat activism and fat liberation, fat, all this stuff. You're gonna have a large. You're gonna have a large amount of people that are gonna disagree with that, and I think it's fair since you're posting your videos in a public platform. And the fat person who's leaving that comment also believes that there's an extra level of sadness there, though, because I mean, obviously they they are perpetuating the abuse that they are also going to be subject sub subject to. What is the abuse besides like the abuse that you're suffering every single day from being overweight, obese, and all the negative consequences that come with that? Why are you talking about the the only abuse, which is like social media abuse? Like, what is that? Like, what, what are you talking about? So social media abuse and then the abuse in society, most fat people that are acknowledging this in this particular type of way, at least acknowledging is the first step, right? Admitting is the first step, as Kanye once said. At least you have that information, dude. Has it ever occurred to you that most of the people that think about it like this, most people are not thinking about it like that. Most people are not going out into the world going, I'm so oppressed because I can't walk upstairs and I have to buy four plane seats and I can't properly have bowel movements and I can't wash myself properly because my gut is so big. They need to increase room sizes because they're so they're so small for me. Most people are not thinking about it like that. You're just Which weird. Which is super sad. I don't know if they realize that, but... But yeah, but it pisses me off no way when I read that comic. So I'm like, you, you, that's just such an asshole thing to say. Like, why is it an asshole thing to say the truth, but then you can, you can say whatever you want and that's not an asshole thing to say? I get it. Like, an opinion, it's like an asshole. Everybody has one. But how can you be so incredibly ignorant to the fact that somebody else can disagree with you and say what they think is true and then you can say what you think is true and then say that they're the asshole for responding to what you said when you were the original poster 
what are you even talking about dude so people can't just talk they're just assholes regardless of what they say or are you an asshole too or are, is it only for them to be an asshole how does that work exactly i am not above criticism people will criticize you you can't say you're not above criticism and then hate the fact that people criticize you well i guess you can bro i mean there are worse things to say dude me all day every day and the thing is, that comment would still be a criticism, regardless of not whether it has the I am fat at the beginning. But they add that in to give themselves, first of all, a pat on the back to be like, I'm not like one of those fatties. I'm a good fatty. I believe what the good guys think, right? The cool kids think, right? They want to It's not even the cool kids. That's just basic, like, <laughs> it's basic fact, dude, to understand that when you're fat, you're going to have a lot more problems. Why are you even upset at all? You're literally saying that you're okay with criticism, but you're, this entire video is the fact that you don't like taking criticism, especially if it's from another fat person. I guess it's like, I don't know, it's probably worse because they're fat, so you feel like maybe they shouldn't be talking to you like that, which is dumb, because if any, that'd be like somebody going like, oh, I hate it when other women tell me that, that I'm a woman. Like, what are you talking about? Or I hate when women tell me that having periods suck. Like, how dare you say that? I think periods are awesome. Having an egg sac and having it bleed every single month is awesome. What do you like? Sometimes people are just going to say things that you disagree with. And you, to sit there and say you don't have a problem with it while making an entire video about it. it, it, it all right. All right. Obviously, you don't feel that. Pat on the back for that, first of all. But then they also want to convey some kind of authority. That they have some kind of authoritative voice on the matter just because they could be misconstrued as being part of the group. Bring it back to my like women in the workplace example. Uh, not all women are feminists. Uh, some women are misogynists in the same way that not all fat people are fat liberationists True. or body positive people. And some of them are fat phobic. It's the same logic. So what is your problem then? Like if you can come to the agreement that not all fat people think the same way in the same way that not all women think the same way, why are you upset when a fat person – it should just be basic knowledge at that point then, right? You should just be like, oh, it's it's just what it is. Like if a fat person comments in a negative way about fat people, it would be the same thing as if a thin person approached it in the same scenario because it, it, not all fat people are the same. You don't think in like hive mind mentalities and it's like – in the same way that women also don't think of high man high mind mentalities, right? In the same way that women are not all feminists. Okay, all right, dude. I mean, I don't I don't even understand the point of this video if you're just gonna circle back to going. But I guess you can just do whatever you want. It's fucking sad, and it makes it sure. It makes my blood boil. <laughs> well, it's sad that you're posting this video while claiming that you're not offended, while making an entire video about being not offended, while obviously being offended, and saying that people should be able to do whatever they want, while calling them assholes for doing whatever they want, when you are literally doing the same exact thing, just in the opposite direction. <laughs> makes my blood boil. Lately, I've been really noticing the ways that thin people will, like, use fat as an insult for select people that they already think are bad. Like with Donald Trump, people would make fun of his weight all the time and fat people were like, hello, he's not gonna see that, but all your fat friends are and we're gonna know exactly what you think of us. Being fat in and of itself is an insult because you're you're insulting somebody in the sense of like, I mean, why would you ever take being fat as a good thing? Maybe if you're pregnant and you're properly nourishing your child, maybe in that particular scenario, but even in that scenario, I wouldn't say that you're even fat, you're just, putting on extra calories to facilitate the birth of a child. Maybe if you're like an Eskimo and you're trapped up in like the North Pole for like a few months and you have extra calories to burn, so you're probably okay with that. I don't think, I'm, what scenario is it good to be fat? I don't know, maybe like you're a professional strongman and it's good that you weigh double or triple what you should weigh so you can lift more weight. Okay, but like these are very niche scenarios. So when somebody organically says you're fat and you don't take it as a disrespectful comment, I don't even understand what baseline you're even working with. Being fat in general is not a good thing. So when somebody says you're fat, do you think that they're looking at it as like a, oh my God, seriously? Wow, stop, stop it. Slay queen, you're totally right. Totes right. Oh my God, look how pretty I am. I can literally grab onto my appendages and just like throw them over you like it's a blanket. And most people are not gonna look at it like that. So yeah, I, I don't even think, uh, if you're gonna call Donald Trump fat, sure. Uh, I mean, I, I look at it as disrespect regardless. But that didn't even occur to thin people because they don't think of their fat friends. I don't give a fuck. Like, what is this, like, ideology of, like, oh, I have to perfectly critique all of my language to better suit the people around me or not even better better the people around me. People in general. It's never going to work. You're going to offend somebody regardless of what you say. Even if you are a thin person and you said, I think Donald Trump has the ideal physique body. 
many people are going to disagree with you in the same sense that if you said like i think donald trump does not have the ideal sub physique body people are going to disagree so just say whatever the fuck you want to say if you're somebody's friend and they get upset with you for saying these particular types of words they should not be your friends they just they, they just shouldn't be i don't want to be around somebody that i have to always be thinking about how they're going to receive a particular type of statement and how I need to better adjust that statement. I'm not doing that. That's fucking crazy. At least you know I'm I'm, I'm a very, very uh, organic person. You're going to say something. It may be offensive, but you should know that I'm your friend. Therefore, you shouldn't look at it like that. As being the bad fat people that they like to make fun of. They use fat only on people they think are already bad because to them, fat means bad. So they only use it when they feel like somebody deserves it. Most of the time being fat is bad. Like there are very niche scenarios where you can be fat and it'd be okay. And like I said but earlier, when you're, we're talking about fat, we're talking about people that are not 20, 30 pounds over. We're talking about people that are 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds, 200, 300 pounds over, okay? These people, obviously, it's not good. You're suffering major conditions every single day. So, yeah, there are very few scenarios where it's good. This is also why a lot of times when you are fat, people in your life who are hitting on you, being nice to you, being your friends, if you do something to piss them off, or if you ask them to treat you better, they will be like, yeah, fuck you, fat bitch. Damn, what do you mean treat me better? <laughs> Who approaches a conversation like that? Like, hey, Jessica, um, I was just wondering if you can fucking treat me better, bro. The way you've been acting recently is fucking atrocious. I mean, obviously, she's not saying that. And what friends are you talking about? So you're telling me you have a friendship with somebody. And they've been treating you some type of way. And you chose to, adjust, you you chose to go up to them and go, hey... You know, I, I just don't really like the way you've been treating me recently. And that person goes, well, fuck you, you fat biatch. I don't give a fuck what you say because you are nothing. Like, who is who is his friend, first of all? And then you should have never been friends with that person to begin with if that's how they're going to approach you to begin with, man. What the fuck are you talking about? They will use your size as a weapon when they feel that you deserve to have that weapon used on you. Everybody uses everything against you regardless of who it is. It's just what it is. Hopefully you have friends that are going to come at it from a nuanced perspective and they're going to have the context of who you are as a person and they're going to maybe adjust their statements to better suit those particular things because it's very easy for somebody to just go, you're a fat bitch, as opposed to, hey, you know, I know you got these problems with their eating habits and I know that you can probably do something to alleviate those things. There are different ways you could approach different scenarios, sure. Um, but some people may need the you're a fat bitch statement. Some people are just better in those particular scenarios to hear the truth in a very raw, organic way as opposed to the sugarcoating statements. And it's up to you to determine how to uh, associate those statements. Like, don't get me wrong, right? I think that words are most definitely perceived differently to different people and depending on who you're talking to you should be uh you should most definitely have those words be adjusted depending on that person right but to think that you have to completely change up all the words you have to say depending on the friend that you're around or people that you're around it's a thankless task it's never going to happen it's never going to appease that person and plus you might be enabling that person where you give an inch they may take a mile they may take more from you how many times have you been around somebody that Maybe they said, I just need space or I just need time. I need you to do this for me. I need you to do that. And you do that and it, they keep taking. They keep going and they keep going and they keep going. And eventually there's a breaking point because you gave too much and they don't respect you anymore. I know I've been in situations like that. So instead of compromising on who you are, you should probably be true to yourself and stop enabling people to the degree that you, like, you think is okay here. Now, there are some people who feel that all fat people, by virtue of their fatness, deserve to have fat used as a weapon on them. And those people are all over my comment section. I think we all know who they are. But the thing is, fat is not a weapon. It's just a word. It's just a word that describes a body. But you're literally describing it as a weapon. You're, 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 the entire point of the video is, if you're going to use fatness in a way to derogatorily shame Donald Trump, the the consequences of that is that you're inadvertently also shaming your fat friends who are going to look at that and judge you based off of those words so if you're saying that it's not a, it's not a weapon to be used against them then why the fuck are you looking at it as a weapon to be used against them what are you talking about this okay but when it's used as a weapon that gives it so much power so it's not used as a weapon but it's used as a weapon describes a body but when it's used as a weapon that gives it so much power so I call myself fat and I am fine if people call me fat like neutrally in conversation. But if somebody calls me fat as a weapon, yeah, I will be offended because- What is even the point of this video, bro? What do you like? Okay, I get it. Context matters, but you, 
what am I supposed to do? I don't want to be your friend if, like, you should always be looking at it within the context of how somebody says something or where they say it or what something is going on in a particular time frame because different things can be interpreted in different ways depending on when they were said or where, with, where they were said, right? Obviously. So I'll give you an example. I know a lot of people are against white people saying the N-word, but I know that many people wouldn't be offended by the fact that if a white person said the N-word, if it was in like a rap song or if it was in like a book or something like that. I remember actually very vividly, I was in high school and there was a teacher of mine and it was, oh my God, I couldn't believe how cringe. I went to a very predominantly black school, right? And there was like three white kids in the entire school and I was one of them. I was probably two of them. And I remember we're reading some bullshit book. I forgot what the name of the book was. I don't remember. But anyway... She was reading the book, and the, the one of the words was the N-word as it came up, and she literally stopped, and she said, okay, guys, I'm going to say something here, and it might offend somebody, but I'm not saying it in a hateful, racist, demeaning way. I'm saying it to make sure that I'm true to the book, and I'm saying it very, very coming from a place of happiness and making sure everybody's okay with that and i remember at the time i was like what the fuck are you just say a fucking thing like nobody here is gonna look at you as like less like oh you're fucking racist because you said a word that was written from a book 150 years ago what the fuck are you talking about bro get your shit together some people are just way too sensitive about certain words and how people say them and even to the degree where they don't look at context in any way at all Everything is within context and if you're not looking at that particular type of context then the word itself it's either I, I believe it's all or nothing. I don't think people should be shamed based off those things, man. It's, it's just dumb. Stop, stop being so cringy. Because you're being an asshole. Every single form of oppression is inherently and intimately connected. So for me, my hope is that if I you just were... These people are just so incredibly weird, dude. Having entire videos dedicated to the oppression of fat people or the how, how all oppression is linked, which is neither here nor there. What are you even talking about? Like, who? Why would you ever... Look at it like that. In what way is every oppression linked? Like how? Please, I would love Following to know. Following my page for fat liberation content and you yourself are a fat liberation. You know, it's really, it's like, it's like when somebody, the reason why they like to say this shit is because, for instance, everybody knows that when you think of oppression, you're thinking about a black guy, right? You're thinking about a black guy in the hood or something like that. So if this woman says all oppression is linked and her oppression is fat phobia, which most people don't even take, like they don't bat an eye at that shit. Most people look at fat phobia and go like, what the fuck is that? No. So if you link that with racism or like homophobia or something like that, and now suddenly because you're virtuing, you're virtue signaling to these other causes and you're putting your cause next to these causes, it's almost kind of like those causes give this cause validity, which is cringy as fuck because your cause can't stand on its own two feet without having other things support it. And that's the reason why oftentimes I hear them say this shit that you are actively standing in solidarity in whatever ways that you can with the people of Palestine. Not what? only for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, but for land back as well. So with all of this said, there's a fundraiser that y'all need to go and support immediately. It's a collaboration between a fat Palestinian American activist, <laughs> a illustrator and a creator on the internet. All three of them came together to produce this shirt. And all of the profits from it are going to the Middle East Children's Alliance. They it's fine if you want to, like, support Palestine and things like that. Like, I'm not opposed to supporting causes that I feel like people should be supporting or they want to be supporting. No problem. But I don't know if this cause is, like, super helpful for people within these particular genres. Because, for one, how many Jewish people that support Israel are fat? I don't know. I really have no idea how many... I don't know, bro. It's it's like it's such a it's such a touchy topic, dude. I stand neither here nor there on the uh I don't even know much about it besides like I, I did a little bit of research so I get like a baseline understanding on what the fuck is even going on in the Middle East and things like that. And by research I mean I just like read through Wikipedia for an hour and a half. So I don't know. I have it available right now. Somebody let me know down below how you feel about fatties for Palestine. <laughs> a cropped and a full length version. I just bought the full length version. But the pre-orders are open from now until March 8th. I will say some of the sizes are limited. Crazy. I think you can go Couldn't even get fat acceptance. Can't even get fucking size inclusivity in, in fatties for Palestine shirts, dude. What's the point? You can't even give me proper uh, sizing? I'm big as fuck. Look at my stomach. It is big. I'm going to need a big stomach. Big stomach shirt. Request some of the sizes if they're already out. But go and support them right now because we are not free until everybody is free. That's not how that fucking works. Why are you only if... It's fine. Like I said, if you want to support Palestine or whatever the fuck, right? 
But nobody had a problem when China had their Uyghurs. And then, you know, what about all the other oppression that's going on in the Middle East? What about all the oppression that's going on in Asia? Like there is there is plenty. There are plenty of countries and plenty, plenty of social economic standpoints that are like oppressing people. And sure, this might be the one that's like super fashionable right now. But these people are so quick to go, we support Palestine, which is fine, but they completely ignore all this other shit, right? And I know, it's just, I don't know, man. It, it, it's just so interesting to me how, I, how, how these people choose, they cherry pick the things that they want to support. And after this is over, are you going to support like the Uyghurs or like the slave men over there? No, probably not. I think we all conveniently like to forget that losing weight can really fuck up your mental health in a lot of different ways. Having the weight on your body is going to fuck up your mental health because now you're thinking about constantly about all the problems. Maybe your hormones are imbalanced because your body is literally every single day being overtaxed. It's probably like waking up on the wrong side of the bed every single day while being fat and not getting adjusted like proper sleep. So, okay, whatever. With the Ozempic craze and everything that's going on with that right now, I'm starting to see people talk about it a little bit. And I just like, I don't know who needs to hear this, but like my experience has been that mentally I cannot be at peace when I am constantly thinking about food. And when I am constantly monitoring my body okay. and measuring its progress or its perceived success. As but what's the alternative? If you're constantly thinking about food, which is not what most people do when it comes to weight loss. Most people are just going about it in a very passive way. So are you somehow thinking that when people are obsessing over food in the sense of like, I need to make sure whatever I'm eating is super nutritious and is going to give me the most bang for my buck for my diet. You're considering that to be a problem you're considering that to be the issue but not giving a fuck what you eat and just eating whatever the fuck you want whenever the fuck you want having no schedule nothing about it you're not also considering that as a problem that's it's a very interesting it's a very interesting dichotomy no as it gets smaller and i'm not talking about my current self i'm like looking back into the past because i've been pretty much the same size for about three years but if losing weight is something you decide to do or happen to do be careful of your mental health because I am I, I, these people saying this shit whilst being some of the most unhealthy people is so <laughs> it's it's so concerning to me, dude. Like, how can you sit there and go be careful when you're losing weight? Because if you lose weight, you're probably going to have a lot of mental health problems. Really? So if I lose weight, I'm going to have mental health issues. But what about the mental health issues that you're having when you're not just giving a fuck in general about your unhealthy body and all the foods that you're eating? You don't give a fuck about any of that, but I should care about what I'm... Okay, all right, sure. So, so serious right now. I have never been more preoccupied and self-obsessed and anxious and hyper self-critical than when I was desperately trying to be smaller and succeeding. And I have never had a worse relationship with food than when I had to morally approve of everything. You're projecting OD right now. And and you're looking at it in this like very weird perspective. You're saying that you had a lot of insecurities and you were super hyper focused on the foods you were eating and this and that. But you're also in that same boat. You just traded one badness for the next badness. Like having the pendulum all the way over here and then going, I don't want to do this anymore. And you swung the pendulum all the way back to the other side in the sense of like, you were hyper-focused on all the foods that you were eating and working out and losing weight. And then on the other end, now you don't give a fuck what you're eating and you just eat whatever the fuck you want in your own words because you were super focused on it. Now you're not focused on it at all and you become obese as a consequence of that. So they're both not good. I don't think people should be like hyper-focusing on food and I don't think people should be eating whatever the fuck they want without any remorse for themselves. I think there should be like a cool medium ground at least over on this side in the sense of like, I want to lose weight or if you're in the middle in the sense of like, trying to maintain a good healthy body size for you depending on where you are in life and then adjusting accordingly it's not good on either side i don't think the people that go to the gym for nine hours a day and hyper focus on every single food that they eat and they eat like 50 eggs a day or whatever the fuck like i'm not saying you can't do that you can which is fine but definitely on that that side it's not me it's not sustainable like a lot of people burn out quickly on that side that's why i think like slow and steady wins the race um practice good health Practice good eating habits, nutrition, understanding nutrition should be like a baseline. And But the other side of the situation, which is like don't give a fuck about anything and just eating everything in general, that's also not good. You understand that, right? It's also bad. So if you're saying like you're going to have poor mental health over here, you, you have poor mental health over here by saying that. Everything that went in my mouth. And maybe that doesn't happen to everyone. Maybe it's just an eating disorder thing and not a diet thing. 
but a quarter of diets result in eating disorder. All I'm saying is you if your body from? is taking up a huge amount of space in your brain and if you're not having nobody's okay. Most people are not obsessing over their body. They're just trying to pursue weight loss in an organic way through the realm of diet and exercise. Nobody's like, most people are not obsessing. They're just doing what they got to do to lose weight. For you to say that and then like, because like, I understand why you're saying that. You're trying to make it seem like it's a very like crazy idea to lose weight. Like the people are going above and beyond to lose weight, which in general, that's not what's happening. But when you're on your side, which you're just eating whatever the fuck you want, whenever the fuck you want, and then claiming that we are the crazy ones. I don't, I, I really can't believe that these words are being said. Self-worth on any given day is determined by a certain body check. Please Fit be check. careful. Please check in with yourself. Please. Can you, can you check in with yourself? Can you recognize the trauma and terribleness that's going on with you? What about the mental health that you're going through? Why did, why is it so important for other people to check on their mental health when you are very clearly exhibiting signs of that same mental health? Okay. It's don't let it slide out of control because it can now. be really hard to get your life back at that point. Calm I'm down. back from Portugal and this is the Fat Accessibility Report. As a fat person, I have huge anxiety about traveling and so I thought maybe this could help somebody if I break down everywhere that I have been and exactly how fat friendly it is. I, I know that it's not going to be fat friendly at all, dude. Here in America, these people often complain about the problems that America has when it comes to the fat phobic, fat phobia in society and things like that. But going to any other country, dude, it's like really on display the amount of fat phobia like things are not made for fat people in most other places compared to the west okay so I w i'm very interested in hearing how many stairs she had to walk up uh all the non-elevator access the towels not being big enough the rooms being too small i'm interested obviously flying is the most difficult thing we flew easyjet which is the cheapest airline that goes out of the closest airport and i really like easyjet for one specific reason which is that they have the armrest on the window seat that flips up a lot it's just crazy to say that like most people when they talk about plane rides they're going okay one of the best things about this plane is the cheapness, the comfortability, the access to the bathroom, like how fast they're going to get there and all this other stuff, the ease of end. This person says, nah, it's the armrest. The armrest is the real deliciousness of the flight. You know you're fat as fuck when you're talking about having an armrest as the, the, the deal breaker, dude. A lot of U.S. airlines don't have that, and it won't let the armrest flip up, which is really uncomfortable. But to flip it out of the way gives you a little bit Just of Just lose weight, and you won't have the problem with the armrest anymore. You guys literally struggle every single day. Man, just pick one struggle. Why do you guys have these issues, man? Extra room, and a lot of the EasyJet planes also have much skinnier rails so that you're not like, you don't have this blocky rail pushing into you potentially. Jesus. I have narrower hips, so I'm able to fit in plane seats no problem. The only issue is my shoulders often will be bumping the person next to me. Blake. And that wasn't an issue on this flight because that person was my mom. Yay. But I will say on our flight back... But you were still bumping into her, though. Just because she didn't say anything about it doesn't mean that you weren't bumping into her. It was me, my mom, and then another fat person in our row. And she asked to switch, and they were very accommodating because there was space on the flight. So if you need to do that, definitely a possibility. As far as tourist attractions, there are some narrow corridors and passageways. <laughs> Nothing I physically couldn't fit through, but sometimes there's a negotiation when somebody is coming down while you're going up or vice Crazy, dude. Why are these issues? I cannot believe these people are dealing with these problems day in, day out. And then they have the audacity to go, yeah, the stairwell was kind of narrow and it was real tough sometimes to get by people that were also walking on these... I just don't understand why this is always going to be an issue for these people and they don't they just don't lose weight or have like this ever like a red flag going in their head like hmm maybe I shouldn't be dealing with having armrests on planes be problems or walking up and down stairs be problems or having stairways be too narrow I don't think I should have to deal with any of that that never occurs to them they just think that everything is fat phobic oh my god the people that made these buildings are fat phobic the people that made airplanes are fat phobic armrests are fat phobic Everything is fat phobic, but never anything to do with you. You don't have to change at all. It's, it's, I don't know, man. It's just like the accountability for these people is just on display all the time. They can never, ever, ever take responsibility for themselves. And the entitlement is serious. Vice versa. That presented no issue for me, although I always do feel like, oh my God, I have to flatten myself against this thing and they're still not going to be able to get by. But it's fine.
The train seats on the Lisbon public transit that we went on, we took one bus into the city, which was very nice, pretty big seats, really comfortable, armrests that flipped up. It was great. <laughs> In the city, we took one train to Cascais, which is this beautiful beach town. That train was actually very roomy. I was impressed. Definitely almost on par with Amtrak. Certainly, I get it. Like This video is all about the beauty of going on a trip while fat. I just, man, it's just, it's just crazy to me how these are, these are even things that you have to worry about at all. Like, oh yeah, the train seats were really wide, so I was good. Bro, why do you even think like this at all? Only on par with most regional rail in the U.S. Probably bigger than most of the train seats in England, to be honest. Okay. The tram was a little bit trickier, but you can stand, and usually the little ones are packed really tight anyway, so it's like you're going to be up against people no matter what size you are. Hold I up. I did have the experience on a tram of sitting next to another fat person, and it was like, well... This really is not made for two fat people to be here, but we made it work. As Crazy. far as accommodation, we stayed in a hostel, which I was a little nervous about because I knew I was probably going to have to sleep in a bunk bed, but it was actually amazing. I really love bunk beds. I'm just afraid that they're going to fall apart under me. Go for Crazy, bro. If you're so fat that you're looking at a bunk bed as like not structure structurally compatible for your body type. Well, I mean, let's just be honest here for a second. Most of the things in our society and in societies in general are not going to be accountable or uh, they're not going to be accessible for a great amount of fat people, depending on how big you are, right? And if you're a bigger, bigger fat person, then generally speaking, most things are not going to fit you. Like if you're somebody that's four, five, six, seven hundred pounds, everything is not going to fit you at all. And gradually, as you become smaller and smaller, you have more and more access to things. But the sad truth of the situation is these things shouldn't just be issues for you in general. Like the fact that you're complaining about all this stuff is insane to me. You're literally discussing right now the terribleness of being in a bunk bed because you're afraid that the bunk bed itself may collapse under the sheer girth of your body. And that never strikes you as a problem. You never look at that as like, hmm, maybe I should lose weight so I never have to worry about this. Nope, you just consider it to be like fat phobic or like this is just the way it is. It doesn't have to be that way. You can just lose weight. You don't have to be fat figure but this one was really sturdy not even a creak from it and there were stairs up instead of a ladder which was nice it was just kind of a big wooden box and at one point i had to use it for a voiceover audition so the blankets up there because i was recording most of the furniture felt very stable as far as like holding I, my I, why is this, this issues, was like a very man. antique -y thing and i was nervous but it was actually fine the issue, though, was at restaurants, a lot of the chairs have arms like this. Crazy. This is another thing that wasn't a problem for me because of the way that my body is shaped. But if you have a bigger butt or bigger hips, this is going to be tricky for you. Most people are not having such big butts that they're like the armrests on chairs are going to be issues, right? Most people. And I understand, like, again, this whole video is about her fat experience while flying to whatever fucking country this is. But it's just... I cannot believe, bro, having a whole tutorial on how to travel to a different country and going through the all the bad stuff about being fat. Well, just just take a minute and really dissect all the terrible it, the terrible stuff that's happening to you. Look at yourself in the mirror and see if there's anything about you that you can change. In like you can't change the world, but you can change yourself. In or in Portugal in general. The other thing to be aware of is there are a lot of steps to walk up and hills to walk up. Can to you imagine saying that? Like, I know that you're going to have to go travel to these places with historical monuments and beautiful structures that were made from people hundreds and thousands of years ago, or whatever the fuck. So there's going to be steps. There's going to be things that you have to walk on. I know it's going to be tough for a lot of fat people. So just to let you know that you might have to walk. Get to these beautiful views, which are literally the entire reason to go to Lisbon, in my opinion. It's incredible. And so if you have any accessibility issues as far as like movement or exercise, that's going to be a tricky thing too. They if, you, if you're so fat that you can't walk, then you shut. Like, I don't even understand why you would even go on trips like this in general. This is a terrible piece of information. Of elevators, but there is still climbing involved. I did get nervous about exceeding one small elevator's weight limit. Because Crazy. It was in Dude, it, okay. We got to end the video here. If you're so fat that you can no longer... If you're so fat that you're talking about exceeding the weight limit on an elevator and you don't think, I need to lose some weight. This elevator is literally telling me I weigh too much. I should lose weight. And instead you go, it's just the way it is. This country is just fat phobic. I don't understand how you can look at any anything in life through the realm of reality. You are literally living in fairytale land. But anyway, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those beautiful things. I'd appreciate tremendously. If you want to become a member of my channel, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine too. I want to thank everybody that is a member. You guys are all beautiful, amazing, spectacular people. 
And also, I want to thank everybody that subscribed. Thank you so much for subscribing, you beautiful, amazing people. I'm sorry that you hear people in the background, dude. Um, it's the people downstairs. They're I don't know what they're doing. They're destroying the entire place to build it back up for people that are going to move in. I have no idea. But that's what the banging is. Anyway, guys, if you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in chuckles. So I got these. Somebody gave me chuckles. These are old-timey candies, apparently. I had one, and it was the green one. I'm having, like, one a day. And they're they're okay. They're just, like, basic candies that you can get from the store. I don't know why so many people thought they were so good, but... There I maybe I just don't maybe it's like the novelty of the the candies or something like that but leave it down below chuckles and um, I'll let you know how much of a beautiful person you are you are a beautiful person you're an amazing spectacular beautiful person if you were here right now I would bestow upon you a beautiful clothes hanger I have it hanging right there on the uh, hook I think yeah it's a hook I would get it for you but it's kind of weaved right now but if you were here I would present it to you I'd go here you go this beautiful clothes hanger for a beautiful person such as yourself you can hang things on this and then you can also use it as like a bow and arrow you know I used to do that when I was back as a kid I used to put pencils in the middle of it and just shoot them at things anything at all and it was probably not a good idea because I knew a kid that did that and uh, that shit flew into a kid's eye which is not good. Luckily, his eye didn't fall out or anything like that. I'm sure you would never make that mistake because you're a responsible individual and you know you know better than to shoot pencils into other people's eyes. So I know that you're a responsible person. You wouldn't do that. And you're also beautiful, amazing, spectacular, awesome person. Anyway, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, and... My Discord server, also, uh, I have a second channel now, which is dedicated to stream highlights. I upload on that every once in a while, so if you want to check out more content, that's there, too. Anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace!